Bonjour à tous. Hello. Uh, this virtual press conference about wildfires in Northwest Territories is being held virtually on Friday, August 18th. I'm the moderator, Greg Quinn with Market News International in Ottawa. Today, we have with us for the update, Harjit Sajjan, Minister of Emergency Preparedness, Bill Blair, Minister of National Defence, Terry Beach, Minister of Citizen Services, Pablo Rodriguez, Minister of Transport, and Julie de Bruson, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resources and to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Uh, journalists, let's stick to one question, one follow-up. Un question, une supplementaire, s'il vous plaît. I remind everyone dialed in to stick to best practices to minimize outside noise. Use the raise hand function to seek a question. Uh, with that housekeeping done, let's begin with opening remarks. Uh, ministers, uh, allez-vous, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour, bonjour tout le monde. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining you from the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil waututh First Nations. This has been an incredibly challenging week for Canadians. The wildfire situation in several parts of the country remains very serious. We have seen it escalate rapidly here in British Columbia and in the Northwest Territories. We saw just how quickly things changed in the Okanagan just yesterday, with states of emergency declared and evacuations being ordered for West Kelowna and parts of Kelowna. These fires are very active and very unpredictable. Residents in the area should remain vigilant. You can register for updates from the Central Okanagan Emergency Operations Center on their website. And while we do not yet know the full extent of the damage, I've been in touch with Minister Ma to offer further federal assistance if required. And also last weekend, I received and quickly approved a request for federal assistance from the Government of the Northwest Territories. Through this request, the Canadian Armed Forces are providing personnel and resources to assist with uh, Type 3 firefighting, airlift resources for the movement of people and equipment, and support with evacuation planning and coordination. The federal government is also delivering uh, funding to eligible First Nations through the Indigenous Services Canada's Emergency Management Assistance Program. The Canadian Coast Guard is providing personnel and equipment to assist with firefighting. Public Services and Procurement Canada is for supporting the territory with emergency contracting, and the RCMP is on the ground helping with evacuation efforts. And the Public Health Agency of Canada is providing essential supplies through the National Emergency Strategic Stockpile. Now, so, several other uh, federal departments and uh, agencies, including the Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre, are supporting efforts in the Northwest Territories through this request for federal assistance or on their own mandates. And just yesterday, the Prime Minister convened a meeting of the Incident Response Group. By bringing ministers and senior officials together, we are can aid uh, in my Minister Sajjan, your connection is not good right now. We can't hear you. In your home. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, now we can, but the connection uh, lag a little bit, so we can uh, hear you in the past 30 seconds. Oh, okay. We're about... Can you hear me now? Is that good? Yes, we can hear you now, yes. Okay. Yesterday, the Prime Minister convened a meeting of the Incident Response Group. By bringing ministers and senior officials together, we are making sure that we are using every tool we can to aid in this response. I'm also in close contact with uh, with my counterpart uh, from the Northwest Territories, Minister Thompson, and offered any additional, uh, additional support that they might need. The stress of leaving your home, not knowing if it will be there when you return, is a reality now faced by thousands. It is during these dark times that we see our country come together. I've spoken with Minister Ellis in Alberta and Minister Ma in British Columbia to thank them for their, for their support and what they're providing uh, for the Northwest Territories. I would also like to recognize all of the host communities that have been welcoming those displaced by wildfires. And residents of the Northwest Territories and evacuees can call 811 in the territory and one 844 or 259-1793 out of territory if they have questions about the evacuations. To the firefighters, members of the Canadian Armed Forces, emergency management officials, and community volunteers who have been working around the cl clock, we are grateful for your service. And, and to those being evacuated, know that the Government of Canada is here for you. 
We are working closely with our provincial and territorial partners to help with immediate response and will be there through the recovery and rebuild process. Please continue to follow the guidance from your local authorities. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. And now I will turn it over to Minister Blair. Well, thank you very much, Minister Sajan. Uh, bon après-midi, tout le monde. Uh, let me begin by, uh, first of all, I'm speaking to you from my home, which is located in the traditional territory of the Mississauga of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, and the Wendat peoples. I'd also like to begin by acknowledging how difficult uh, this, this period of time has been for all of those who have been affected by these unprecedented wildfires occur occurring currently in the Northwest Territories, British Columbia, and across Canada. Our top priority is to keep people safe, and the federal government is here to support you. We will do whatever it takes to ensure that you can return to your communities and livelihoods as quickly as possible. And today, I will have the opportunity to provide an update on the military's contribution to the evacuations and firefighting efforts in the Northwest Territories, where half of the population has now been displaced. On Wednesday evening, territorial authorities advised all residents of Yellowknife to evacuate the city by noon today due to the threat of a large fire just west of the city. This order affects all 22,000 residents of the capital city, which of course is over 40% of the population of the entire Northwest Territory. This evacuation also includes the First Nations communities of Deta and Dilo, which are under threat from the rapidly moving fire. All residents are currently advised to evacuate by air or by car towards Alberta, where they will find support and accommodations in Valley View, Fox Creek, and Red Deer. We know that conditions remain very difficult, and I, I would urge all residents to please follow the advice from local authorities so that we can ensure that you can be, remain safe as you evacuate. Now, with respect to the Canadian Armed Forces, since Saturday, Canadian Armed Forces members have been helping the territory's first responders with evacuation and firefighting efforts. Following a request from assistance from the Government of Northwest Territories, a CAF reconnaissance team deployed to Yellowknife on the weekend, and they were followed very quickly by approximately 150 Canadian Armed Forces members who were then deployed to the region. And that includes 120 soldiers from the 2nd Canadian Division out of uh, Canadian Force Base Valcartier and 30 aviators. On Monday, the Royal Canadian Air Force evacuated approximately 100 people from Hay River and Fort Smith. Canadian Armed Forces members are currently out working the fires. They're mopping up and clearing debris as fires are put out. They're dousing hotspots to prevent further outbreaks. And very importantly, they have been working with local officials to construct fire breaks in and around the western region of Yellowknife and Deta to stop the spread and to protect critical infrastructure, homes, and that in community. Canadian Armed Forces members are also providing aircraft for, mobility, for mobility and logistics tasks and, of course, for air evacuations. Hercules, Globemaster, and Polaris aircraft are currently tasked to conduct evacuation flights to Edmonton and Calgary. And today I can confirm that the first military evacuation flight from Yellow Knight took place last night on board a C-130 Hercules aircraft, which, current, which safely carried 79 long-term care residents to Edmonton. This is an important contribution that the Canadian Armed Forces can make because they have fit for purpose aircraft that are enabled, uh, able to move people who may be non-ambulatory on stretcher or in wheelchair. And they can also provide medical personnel to su provide support and assistance to those who may need it. Additionally, military aircraft are scheduled for, for today. We'll continue to focus on helping the most vulnerable and we'll be there to help for as long as it takes. I'm advised, for example, that we're working with local medical officials in order to safely evacuate people from hospital to, to a hospital in Vancouver. And, and again, Canadian aircraft, Canadian Armed Forces aircraft, and Canadian medical personnel will be there to ensure that that can be done safely. The Canadian Armed Forces is also providing planning assistance and logistical support to territorial authorities and local firefighting crews. And for example, members of the Canadian Rangers are receiving and processing evacuees at the Yellowknife Airport. I'd like to take this opportunity, if I may, to thank all members of the Canadian Armed Forces who have been working around the clock to help fight these fires in Northwest Territories and have put in an extraordinary service to, to Canada and to Canadians throughout this long and difficult firefighting season. Our country is experiencing the worst forest fire season on record. And this summer, Canadian Armed Forces members have deployed across the country. They've worked in Nova Scotia, in Quebec, in Alberta, British Columbia, and now the Northwest Territories. And they will continue to be there for Canada and for Canadians. Let me conclude by saying to all Canadians, 
we'll do everything we can to keep you and your loved ones' livelihoods and communities safe and secure. We'll be with you there throughout this evacuation, and we'll continue to support you through the very difficult and challenging times. We were, I want to acknowledge how difficult and traumatic it can be for people to leave their homes and leave their communities with the uncertainty and fear that all of that would entail. I want to assure them the RCMP will be in your community to make sure that the, the, the evacuation is orderly and that your, your homes and your community remain safe. We've made exemptions, for example, to allow people to, to transport their, their pets because we know how difficult it can be for people to leave them. We will also be there when you arrive at an evacuation center to ensure that you receive the support and the, and, and the, the, the assistance that you may require. There's a long road ahead, but we, I want to assure you all, we will stand by you in this time of need. And I now turn it over to my colleague and friend, Minister Rodriguez. Merci beaucoup, mon cher collègue. Um, en premier lieu, ce que je veux dire à la population des territoires du Nord-Ouest, c'est qu'on est là et on va continuer d'être là à vos côtés. On va faire tout ce qui est possible pour aider, pour assurer la sécurité du monde. Ça, c'est notre priorité numéro un. À la fin de semaine dernière, quand mon collègue, le ministre Sajjan, a reçu une demande d'assistance, il a perdu une seconde, il a approuvé immédiatement. On a envoyé du personnel pour lutter contre les feux de forêt, on a du monde des forces armées canadiennes, mais aussi de la GRC sur le terrain, on donne du support logistique, on a envoyé des avions, des hélicoptères, la garde côtière est présente, il y a aussi du soutien financier pour appuyer les Premières Nations à déployer des mesures d'urgence, et du côté des services publics qui approvisionnent le Canada, on aide les territoires du Nord-Ouest avec la mécanique pour les contrats d'urgence, donc on est là à tout point de vue, et le gouvernement est là pour combattre les feux de forêt, pour aider l'évacuation de la population. Et hier, mes collègues l'ont mentionné, le premier ministre a convoqué le groupe d'intervention à cas décidé, à cas décidé. Il a été très clair, le mot d'ordre est clair, travailler ensemble pour sortir le monde de là. On veut sortir tout le monde de là, combattre les feux de forêt. Et de mon côté, j'ai personnellement parlé avec le président d'Air Canada, de Kenyan North, des différentes compagnies m'ont assuré de leur collaboration. Ils ont augmenté le nombre de vols pour aider à évacuer la population. Par exemple, Air Canada a ajouté de volières, elle ajoute d'autres aujourd'hui. D'autres compagnies aériennes ont augmenté le nombre de vols. Les Transports Canada est en contact direct avec plusieurs autres compagnies pour s'assurer qu'il y a une capacité supplémentaire tout au cours de l'évacuation. Et de plus, et ceci est très important, Air Canada m'assure qu'ils ont plafonné le prix de tous les vols sans écale qui partent de Yellowknife. Vous avez déjà entendu parler de cette situation, de la possibilité d'une augmentation de prix. J'ai tout de suite pris le téléphone, j'ai appelé le PDG d'Air Canada et j'ai parlé aux autres compagnies et le message a été très clair. Il n'y a aucune forme d'exploitation de prix qui allait être acceptée ou tolérée par le gouvernement du Canada. Alors, Transport a reçu plusieurs requêtes pour faciliter l'évacuation. Vous le savez, on ne peut pas ça dans des conditions normales. Transport a dit oui à chacune de ces requêtes. Par exemple, on permet aux pilotes de prolonger leurs heures de vol. Ça compromet la sécurité à nos moment. On permet aux personnes qui ont des animaux domestiques de les amener avec eux en toute sécurité. Vous savez, c'est souvent, ça devient souvent un membre de la famille. On est moins strict également avec des personnes qui auraient pu, dans la course effrénée en sortant de leur maison, qui auraient pu oublier leurs pièces d'identité. On est beaucoup moins strict. Euh, L'important, c'est qu'on puisse évacuer tout le monde en toute sécurité. Et si vous me permettez, j'aimerais féliciter, remercier en fait l'ensemble des personnes qui travaillent avec acharnement euh, dans une situation qui est extrêmement difficile. Euh, je veux particulièrement remercier les travailleurs du secteur de l'aviation pour, pour s'assurer, pour tout le travail qu'on peut s'assurer que la population des territoires du Nord-Ouest se rend à un endroit sécuritaire le plus rapidement possible. On fait la consultation de près l'équipe est en contact avec le terrain de base permanente. Et si quoi que ce soit d'autre qu'on on va le faire. So, I just want to make sure that everyone around the sense, yesterday I spoke with the CEO of Air Canada, I spoke with the Canadian North. Um, They increased the numbers of flights to help evacuate the population. For example, Air Canada added two flights yesterday. They're adding more flights today. Other airlines have also added more flights in recent days. And many airlines have set up to add more flights 
And we've been talking uh, to other airlines to ensure that they have that extra capacity to lose their seats during the vacation. And we've all heard yesterday that we're concerned about the airline. I heard that. I took the phone and called the steel of Air Canada and other companies. Air Canada assured me. They assured me they had all prices to bounce the flights out of the and it clear, it's clear with them that any form of price dodging during the emergency is unacceptable and will not be tolerated. We also need many requests from local authorities, for example, and we are right all of them, all of them. For example, we allowed pilots to extend their flight hours so they continue to help the evacuation, all of that, no safety. We are all residents to bring their pets with them on board uh, of the flights, they're quite often members of the, the, the family. We're more flexible with people that might have left the ID behind. A lot of people ran out of the house and left that document behind. It would be more flexible. The important thing is to evacuate them, evacuate everyone in the security. In fact, I'd like to express my sincere thank you all the, the, the air sector workers for the work of the past three years. And I know and you guys, each and every one of you are to ensure residents of the non-weather workers can get to safety and for that, we are so thankful and we keep monitoring the situation all the time on a permanent basis and if there's anything else we can do, we will do it. Now I'll turn to my colleague, Ms. Rich. Thank you, Pablo. Hello, everyone. I'm currently joining you from the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. Uh, thank you for being here to help us uh, get this information out to Canadians that need it. I'm going to be focusing my comments on the work to deliver services and benefits to Canadians, that, the benefits that they need and require to get through this difficult time. Now, Service Canada is particularly well equipped to respond to the current wildfire situation in the territories as well as in the Okanagan and across Canada. We have national and regional emergency operation centers that are actively providing support uh, to uh, affected Canadians. Of the five centers we have in the Northwest Territory, Fort Smith, Hay River, and Yellowknife are closed. But Service Canada has also deployed mobile outreach units to evacuation centers. This is true in Fort Simpson, as well as in Northern Alberta, and we are assessing the need for further sites as well. This will allow those who may need to apply for benefits, such as employment insurance, to be able to do so right away. Uh, if wildfires has caused you to lose your job, uh, I would suggest that you please submit your application for EI benefits right away. Uh, your application will be prioritized based on your postal code and you will not need a record of employment. Please also consider uh, signing up for direct deposit. If you're still receiving paper checks for employment insurance, uh, your pension, OAS, uh, this will ensure payments will be made directly into your bank account. Uh, we are also proactively reaching out to individuals who are still receiving paper checks. And we're also facilitating repayment, uh, replacement payments for benefit checks that may have been left behind or which may be currently in the mail. Uh, workers are encouraged to create or access their My Service Canada accounts in order to access these services immediately. If you're unable to access regular services online or in person, or if you have any trouble at all, Service Canada employees are here to help. The toll-free number is 1-877-631-2657. I'll say that again. The number for Service Canada is 1-877-631-2657. Five, seven. The Outreach Centre is open Monday to Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If you call outside of these hours, please leave a message Leave your with your information. You will receive a call back on the next business day and uh, your situation will be prioritized. Uh, Service Canada is ready to help everyone affected by the wildfires and our experienced service officers can help you access the benefits you need to navigate this extraordinary uh, set of circumstances and the challenges that our families and our neighbors are facing. You are not alone. There is no need to hesitate to reach out to Service Canada. Our entire organization stands at the ready to assist every single person that is affected by the wildfires. Thank you. And I believe I'm passing the floor to my colleague, Julie DeBruzzi. Um, thank you, Minister Beach, and good afternoon. I'm joining you from Toronto, which is on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas as a credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and it continues to be home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. 
Toronto is also covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas as a credit, and the Williams Treaty signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. So today I'm joining you in my capacity as the Parliamentary Secretary to both the Minister of Energy and Natural Resources, Minister Wilkinson, and to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Minister Guilbeault. As fires rage across our country, like the ones in the Northwest Territories and in Kelowna, we see the impacts of climate change. This government is fighting climate change to slow the pace and impacts of these fires in the future. And we are making sure communities have the support they need to respond to these disasters and to keep people safe right now. Resources Naturelles Canada joue un rôle clé dans l'effort de réponse immédiate et directe aux catastrophes que nous voyons actuellement. Par exemple, le ministre Wilkinson a récemment accordé des fonds à six provinces et territoires, dont les territoires du Nord-Ouest, pour les aider à former des pompiers et à acheter du matériel de lutte contre les incendies. Minister Wilkinson also announced last week that we're partnering with the International Association of Firefighters to train more structural firefighters, equipping them with skills needed to help identify and suppress fires in the critically important wildland urban interface. I'm here today to provide an update on Natural Resource Canada's support to the Northwest Territories. Through a recently signed five-year agreement with the territorial government, this government is providing over $13 million to help the government of Northwest Territories to buy wildland firefighting equipment and train and hire essential personnel. Under this agreement, we are providing federal funding for three specific priority areas. The first is specialized wildfire equipment, like aircraft, vehicles, dispatch consoles, and dust suppressants. The second is external services, such as helicopters, seasonal detection aircraft, and an aircraft skimmer group. The third is specialized training for things like air attack officers and loaders and critical staffing in roles such as wildfire planning, preparedness, mitigation, and response. This funding is flowing to the Northwest Territories right now. Et nous continuons à travailler avec eux, ainsi qu'avec tous les partenaires provinciaux et territoriaux, sur la meilleure façon de les aider à l'avenir. As a government, we will keep building a healthier and safer planet for the long term, and we will continue to do everything we can to keep people and families, including those in the North Territory, Northwest Territories, safe in the immediate term. This is our greatest responsibility and highest priority. And I wanted to mention that I've been in touch with our MP for the area, Northwest Territories, Michael McLeod, who I know has been working very hard and is in constant communication with all of us in how we can best respond. So together, we will get through this. Thank you, merci, and I will now pass it back to my colleague, Minister Sajjan. Unless we can hear from uh, Minister Sajjan, I think we can, I mean, I'm talking to Please. the coordinating, they make able to go to, to questions. Yes, I, I think that makes sense. Thank you, ministers. Merci. Uh, let's head to our questions. Uh, again, a few reminders. Uh, one question, one follow-up on question, une supplémentaire, s'il vous plaît. Uh, I remind everyone, let's stick to best practices to minimize outside noise and use the raise hand function to seek a question. So, Premier Ma, uh, first up, I'd like to turn to Christy Kirk of Globe and Mail. Hello, can you hear me? Very well, thanks. Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, I think my question would probably best be suited for um, Minister Blair. Um, I know today you highlighted uh, some of the efforts around the evacuation of uh, people at the hospital in Yellowknife, and I'm just wondering 
perhaps why that process didn't happen sooner. And the reason I'm kind of mentioning as a point of context is that in the situation in uh, Fort McMurray, the hospital was evacuated days before the citywide order came down and uh, that did not uh, take place in Yellowknife. So can you just provide some context about why the evacuation of the hospital did not happen sooner? Yeah, no. Thank you very much for the question, uh, Christy. Um, c- certainly, we've been v- working very closely with local officials and the, the Northwest Territory government, the, the medical officials at, at the hospital there to make sure that that evacuation could be done safely. Uh, it's also important to acknowledge and recognize that the the, 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 the highway leading south from Yellowknife remains open. And, and that is an important point of egress from the community and evacuation from the city um, it, it, for now. But the, the logistics of moving the people from the hospital, we had to make sure that we had the, the, the right equipment, but also the right personnel so that it could be done safely. And that's what the, the logistics of that have been worked out. Um, I would also point out that that from the outset, the, the officials in the Northwest Territory working very closely with their federal counterparts and even some of our provincial uh, partners um, have, have, have organized this as a very methodical staged and careful evacuation this the situation in 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 Fort McMurray that you referred to uh, was one of a, a more rapidly evolving nature and 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 a greater sense of urgency associated to that the fires that are encroaching upon yellow knife there's there's still ongoing efforts to slow the encroachment and, and the advance of those fires into the community uh, but but I, I think officials quite appropriately have been working very carefully to ensure that there was a methodical staged um, and appropriately timed evacuation of, of, of people from the community. Um, I, we have now reached the stage where we believe it's it's appropriate, necessary, and we have all of the resources that are, will be required to facilitate the movement of, of people from the hospital. We've also made arrangements with the province of British Columbia to move those, those people to adequate facilities to continue to support and provide them with care and services um, in the city of Vancouver. And so all of that work has been ongoing. Um, and, and I believe the timing of and, and the methodical way in which this has been approached has been quite appropriate. Thank you, Minister. And just as a point of follow up, I think uh, perhaps this question will again uh, be directed at you. But I'm wondering if perhaps you can kind of speak to the dynamics in the Emergency Operations Centre. Obviously, you have uh, the Northwest Territory involved, the city, uh, the federal government, the military, um, uh, Alberta Emergency Services. And I'm wondering if in moments like this, there's a challenge in terms of essentially having a clear authority who's running the show. Um, is, is that a challenge when you have so many different levels of, of government uh, coming together to respond to an emergency like this? Well, and Chris, it's a great question, and, and but I want to take the opportunity to share Canadians. First of all, I've spent enough of time myself in emergency operations centers. And I've watched the way in which people come together and coordinate. Um, there is there is very little uh, overlap or conflict among officials. Every, everybody knows their job, and they're doing it exceptionally well. Uh, the, the lead, uh, as always, is is with with the, the province or territory um, and local officials. But at the same time, we recognize capacity and and and, and certainly the unprecedented nature of these fires. The evacuation of their capital city, um, very, very significantly challenging as it would be for anybody. Um, and so our officials, both in the Canadian Armed Forces, in Public Safety Canada, in, in Emergency Preparedness, and Mr. Sagent's uh, personnel, our Government Operations Centre, um, very seamlessly coordinate and 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 come together. Um, everybody knows their job and they they bring all of the resources and, and there's an incredible atmosphere of collaboration. I also wanted to point out at the very outset of this, other jurisdictions, provinces that have experienced similar challenges and even today are continuing to experience challenges reached out almost immediately. I, I heard from, for example, Minister Mike Ellis, uh, the public safety minister in, in Alberta, who, who called saying... He, they had had an awful lot of experience, as you know, earlier this season with wildfires and evacuations and the movement of people and, and accommodating people in shelter. And he offered their expertise, their help in theirs, and 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 was right there. Um, similarly, in British Columbia, Minister, Minister Bowen Ma um, has also reached out. They're facing enormous challenges down in 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 Kelowna right now, but they they still answered the call. And and this is, as I said, an all hands on deck. Um, th- there is very little. Um, overlap or, or, or confusion that could, takes place in this. People know their jobs. They all come together to do their jobs. They're all working out with a single purpose, and that's to keep people safe and, and to affect their do their jobs and to, to, stop, to stop these fires advancing into the community, to protect those communities and homes, but mostly to get people to safety and make sure that they get the supports that they need. Thank you, Christy. Minister, um, 
Euh, ensuite, je vais tourner à Matisse Harvey, Radio-Canada. Oui, bonjour. Merci pour... Euh, pour euh, en fait, je ne sais pas trop à qui la question euh, est la mieux adressée. En fait, je me demande si, euh, de manière générale, vous anticipez que les feux représentent une certaine menace pour le, le site minier euh, de la mine Giant et les travailleurs qui se trouvent sur place. Et euh, surtout, quel est le plan de con contingence qui est envisagé là, si, euh, si ça représente bel et bien une menace? Bill or Arj, I don't know if you got this, but if, if this becomes a threat for the for the mining, the workers. Um... Yeah, thank you. Sorry, my translation is not working here. But uh, in regards to uh, if this is regarding the uh, 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 lodged uh, uh, from the beginning, uh, we were making sure that the, the appropriate resources uh, were there, and just like any other community. We monitor the situation extremely closely to making sure that uh, uh, any resources there, any evacuation that needs to be done, work very closely uh, with them to making sure that uh, personnel are, are well uh, protected and also the property is going to be uh, protected. So there is no difference when it comes to whether it's a mine or or a community, and something that we're monitoring um, uh, very closely up in the north. Est-ce que ça va pour la réponse? Oui, est-ce que... I guess I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, if, if, if the wildfires get closer to the mine and if it represents a threat um, at some point, is, is a specific contingency plan, you know, going to be elaborated or um, what help is, your, is the government maybe um, ready to, to allocate? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, actually, just as I stated, Uh, when it comes to the mining, uh, we have been monitoring uh, the very situation in the one particular mine uh, up, up in the north, uh, just like any other community. First of all, it's, uh, the, the response is managed by uh, the territories uh, themselves. If they need federal resources, they're, they're made available very quickly and we're ready to step up. And just to kind of elaborate on how the kind of the how the response is also done what we don't what we try to do is don't wait for the actual emergency to pop up and then try to move in resources there is very good situational awareness that takes place on on a daily basis and especially when you have such crises happening all across the country you have all the provinces emergency uh, operations center working very closely with the government operations center including that that includes um, uh, the mining sites uh, as well And what we try to do is look at weather patterns, look at any other contingencies and put plans in place early on and have resources ready to go. So if the situation uh, needed it, that the contingency plan can be uh, executed very, very, very quickly here. And so, um, yes, if, so if resources are needed, absolutely, the, the federal resources will be made available just like any other community. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Rafi Bujakanian, CBC. Go ahead, please. Thanks very much. This is for Minister Sajjan. I just wanted to check in on this. We heard from Liz May this morning at a news conference that you have expressed openness to a permanent firefighting force as well as federally purchased water bombers in exchanges with her. Can you tell us where you are at on this, uh, on either of both of these two? Thanks. Sorry, I was on mute. I had a very good discussion uh, uh, with uh, Elizabeth uh, about this. And, and uh, what we, as I offered up to her is that we need to look at what that response uh, need, needs to be when it comes to uh, additional equipment, what type of system is going to be required. Also, we talked, um, one of the things we need to talk about is mitigation and adaptation is something that's going to be very important to her and all um, uh, Canadians. And when it comes to the response that, uh, that we need to have, Um, I want to also comment on the, the work that Minister Blair has done previously in this portfolio that will be that we will be continuing. And the key thing is, is that, this, that we have um, um, uh, for the provinces, and this is one of the reasons why we have identified uh, and funded a uh, thousand new firefighters, and uh, most recently the announcement that. Uh, 
uh, uh, Minister Wilkinson um, uh, had just made. And so we'll continue to work on this. We, we are looking at the uh, equipment. When it comes to additional equipment, especially when it comes to aircraft, it is a little bit more complicated because you have to get in line uh, for the uh, the various companies who, who are building uh, building the equipment. And what we also need to do is look at where do the uh, where are the resources best suited? Uh, are they best suited at the federal level? Or are they best at the provincial and territories? And this is the work that we will continue to do now uh, as we move forward uh, in terms of response. But we'll also, and I look forward to continue that conversation with, uh, with, uh, with Elizabeth on this. Okay. Thank you very much. As a follow-up question for whichever minister can take this, I understand that uh, you know people have had to pay to evacuate on commercial flights. Will you be reimbursing them for this? And if not, why not? Rafi, I'll just jump in here. There, there are obviously people have, have certain responsibilities with respect to traveling and gassing up their car in order to leave by, by highway. Um, certainly what, one of the things that we've undertaken to do is that no one will be left behind. And so if, if for whatever reason a person is unable to evacuate either by, by, by road or by commercial flight, uh, we'll make sure that, that we accommodate them and, and we, we provide them with the support that they need and help them get to, to, to a position of safety. Um, with respect to uh, other fine types of financial supports, that is primarily the responsibility of the, of the territory to design and implement uh, supports. There are a number of different uh, federal programs, for example, the disaster financial assistance arrangement that, that they can access. Uh, we'll be working very closely with the Northwest Territories. Right now, our focus is on getting people to safety, but but we will also work with the territory and work with, with the, the residents who've been impacted on this to make sure that the supports that they may need are available. The disaster financial assistance arrangement does provide an, a number of eligible expenses with respect to um, evacuation efforts, and so we'll be working very closely with the territory in order to accommodate and, and, and to work through that. And and that that information will be forthcoming as 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 quickly as we're able to 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 do so. But right now, the focus is on getting people to safety. Uh, sorry, because I couldn't hear. And if I may add to that, I just said before the second I heard about problems that could be with with prices. I called this here where can then assure that all prices would be economic. Uh, and and again, um, as as Minister Blair said. Uh, so as a priority for now, definitely is people getting people out by air, by, by road, and absolutely no one will be left behind. Thank you, merci. Uh, maintenant, Anne-Caroline Desplanc, Le Journal de Montréal. Oui, bonjour, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui. Euh, ma, ma question porte sur le blocage des nouvelles par Meta euh, dans le contexte euh, des feux. Euh, il y a beaucoup de, 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 de résidents qui se plaignent de ne pas pouvoir avoir accès à de l'information cruciale au moment d'évacuer. Euh, J'aimerais savoir s'il y a, euh, parce que bon, Meta semble dans son droit évidemment, mais est-ce qu'il y a une provision légale ou un règlement quelconque qui permettrait au gouvernement de euh, forcer la main à, à Facebook dans ce contexte Est-ce que, par exemple, une déclaration d'état d'urgence ou, ou quoi que ce soit, ce soit d'autre, ça permettrait euh, au gouvernement de, 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 de forcer la main de Meta Ce que Meta fait actuellement est complètement inacceptable. C'est d'ailleurs quelque chose que j'avais soulevé avec eux. J'avais soulevé avec eux ce qui était arrivé en Australie. Ils m'ont dit les choses seraient différentes ici. Ça ne l'est pas. On voit qu'à travers ce blocage-là, les gens n'ont pas accès à de l'information, de l'information qui est absolument cruciale. Alors, je demande à Meta de renverser cette décision, de permettre aux gens d'avoir accès aux nouvelles. Et je sais que ma collègue Pascal regarde cette situation et, et discute avec, avec Meta. Oui, je comprends bien, euh, M. Rodriguez, mais euh, c'est une question que j'ai aussi posée à votre, euh, votre successeur, Mme Saint-Onge, puis je me suis fait renvoyer vers le cabinet de M. Sajan. Uh, so, M. Sajan, maybe you have uh, an idea of, uh, of, is there any rules, any law that could help uh, with this right now, right? in the immediacy? No, we're talking about the... 
It's the blocking the uh, art, it's the blocking of the news by 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 Facebook. I'm sure that uh, it Sorry, my internet connection is not very good right now. And, and, and can, I, can I just then, then add that the CBC also provides in, in the territory um, a local, local uh, a low frequency newscast that I would encourage people that aren't able to get this absolutely vital information currently through, through Meta that they, that they tune in to, to that uh, CBC broadcast and that information that they do need will be made available through that. Okay, I think we're done with that question. Um, I would like to turn now to Eric Bowling, NWT News. Uh, good morning. Just want to verify that my mic is working and you guys can hear me? Yes. Excellent. All right, so uh, my question is in regards to uh, that we... I, the minister broke up a little bit when he was talking about this, but I think I got the gist of it uh, in regards to price gouging and how it will not be tolerated. Uh, I'm just wondering if I could get an explanation of how that would look. Uh, how is that going to be enforced if and if somebody sees or suspects uh, something, one of price gouging, How what are the mechanisms they can use to uh, report it? Thank you. So the, the second, I hope you can hear me well, the second that I heard about this yesterday, I took the phone and called Mr. Russo, the CEO of Air Canada, that explained to me that there was a glitch, there was a mistake, things were corrected right away, and that all the, the, the fares were at the economic level, that price were totally capped in my department, transport, is monitoring the situation at, at all moments, live, all the time. Uh, okay, uh, that's good. Uh, I'm just curious what sort of penalties or uh, would be uh, enacted on someone who violates this. Yeah. For now, we're, we're assured and we assured that the situation is not happening. But if it had to happen, again, there is zero tolerance from the government. And then I would look at all the options that we have. All of them. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to turn now to Jim Morse, the Associated Press. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if you any of the ministers can answer this question right now but do we know right now how many people have been evacuated from Yellowknife? Uh, i know the evacuation order was supposed to be by noon today do we know if this number has been reached are we near that number the uh, like i did receive a briefing today from the government operations center um the evacuation continues and we don't have the exact numbers um uh just yet and the reason being is that things are is so fluid and we want to move as quickly as possible. Um, but when we have more accurate numbers, uh, we will be able to share it uh, with, uh, with you. But we don't have the exact numbers uh, at this time. Thank you. And, and maybe for Minister Rodriguez, um, you had spoken when you spoke, were talking about additional aircraft being added today and you were breaking up at that time. Could you explain again, this is, I would imagine the additional aircraft is beyond what the commercial airlines are offering? We're, we've asked, of course, this is coordinated from, from the ground, but we've asked support from all the commercial airlines that are operating there. Uh, so Air Canada added more flights, WestJet, Canadian North, we have Air North also helping Summit, uh, North Caribou, of course, the the, uh, the armed forces. And we will make sure that we provide as many planes as we can working with those airline companies. And just to add to that, uh, we are also contracting at the federal level uh, additional aircraft uh, uh, to supplement uh, what the military also has. 
Thank you. Uh, maintenant, Annie Guillemet, Cogeco Nouvelle. Bonjour, vous m'entendez bien? Oui. Je voulais savoir, je comprends qu'on n'a pas de chiffre du nombre de personnes qui ont déjà été évacuées. À ce moment-là, est-ce qu'on a une évaluation du quand est-ce qu'on va avoir terminé d'évacuer les gens puisque les feux sont attendus dans les prochaines heures là, à Yellowknife? Arch, uh, she says that we understand that we have, don't have precise numbers, but she's asking when do we expect to have evacuated everyone? Um, we'll have a je prendrai la réponse en français. Yeah, I apologize for uh, the uh, technical glitch. I can't get the translation here, but the um, uh, we we will get numbers uh, very shortly. Uh, we're getting updated uh, regularly, but every um, every two days because we're trying to put as many aircraft uh, and get the road movement uh, as efficient uh, as possible. We're focused on that. Once we do have the numbers, um, we will be able to provide them. One thing I can say is that, that the evacuation is actually going uh, extremely well. It's been very orderly. They haven't reported, uh, RCMP has not reported any uh, type of uh, hiccups that have come uh, from, the evacu uh, from, from the evacuation. And we'll have a much better idea by the end of uh, today, hopefully, uh, with the numbers and also the time that, um, that, that it will take. And I also just want to stress, as we're doing the evacuation, we're also making sure that the resources are also flowing into the Northwest Territory so that the, the essential services that are actually needed in the territories that we're able to provide uh, fuel supply uh, and food as well. Mon, mon collègue mentionne qu'on devrait avoir des chiffres plus précis aujourd'hui en fin de journée, également de savoir là, le moment auquel tout le monde aura été évacué. Euh, parce que tout se passe en temps réel, on ajoute des avions, on fait sortir les gens dès que possible par la voie des airs, par transport terrestre. Il est en contact permanent avec le terrain jusqu'à maintenant. Les forces de l'ordre nous disent que tout se passe dans l'ordre, qu'il n'y a eu aucun incident. Puis, euh, en, en suivi, M. Rodriguez, est-ce que vous pensez qu'on va parvenir à euh, aider tout le monde qui en a besoin avant que les feux arrivent? On, je vais passer à parler à mon collègue, mais on est profondément convaincu. Arge, do we believe that we'll be able to get everybody out before the fires get there? So, I should also want to stress the... The, the evacuation order that was uh, put into place, um, the genesis behind that originally was that we we're wa watching the fire and the weather pattern extremely uh, closely. And initially, um, the territorial government felt that it was not needed, but they wanted to be prudent because as the winds potentially could have shifted, uh, it would have blocked the highway. But the main emphasis is as we evacuate is to making sure that there's enough resources in place so that the fire actually does not reach uh, yellow nice. And if it does, there's enough resources to prevent it uh, from actually going into, into the city itself. So I want to stress, Even though we're doing the evacuation, the priority is to making sure that Yellowknife um, and all its property um, are safe. And uh, as of right now, um, uh, uh, nothing has changed that, that, that analysis. And we're confident uh, that uh, things can be protected. But as, you, as we know uh, and have seen across the country, that things can change very rapidly. And that's why the, a very prudent decision, which I agree with, with the territorial government, a decision was made uh, uh, to evacuate as many people uh, as possible um, through the roads beforehand and then having using the airport as, as, as the last measure. But right now, the priority is to making sure that Yellowknife is safe and all the resources currently um, are, are in place and will push more resources to making sure that that is accomplished. Était, la, la décision a été prise avec les autorités locales de prendre aucun risque et même si dans certains cas, c'est de mesures préventives de sortir tout le monde le plus rapidement possible tout en permettant d'avoir des les mesures et les moyens nécessaires pour combattre ces feux-là, pour préserver l'intégrité euh, de la ville. Merci. Uh, I have three people indicating they have questions. I'll turn to Bill Graveland, Canadian Press. Hi there, you can hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, terrific. I'm not sure who to direct this to, but I'm curious about the uh, $13 million flowing to the Northwest Terries 
territory's government regarding uh, more equipment, uh, more firefighters. Is this going to have any impact now or is this, uh, are we talking about next year country now? Um, thank you, I, I can answer that. And um, so the money has actually begun to flow and so it can have an impact now. Um, <clears throat> and as far as going forward, there are conversations about you know, what more might be needed to assist, but this agreement was actually signed a few months ago. Okay, and second question, I know it's slightly uh, geographically different, but uh, Minister Sajan, I was wondering if you had any uh, comment about the situation in Kelowna. Uh, no, the situation, um, uh, I can tell you, in Kelowna is, is very concerning. Um, last night, uh, um, even I was getting um, uh, pictures and videos sent by uh, close friends of mine. Um, and uh, our government operations center uh, contacted uh, uh, the BC operations center to get an update. And one thing that we, the message that we got back is that their best crews are actually on this fire. Um, but the winds uh, uh, were very concerning and we didn't know where things were going. And as we know that now, uh, some of the fire has uh, shifted. Um, so we'll get a better update. But one thing I can assure you, uh, assure you is that we have offered up uh, full, full federal support um, in support of the, uh, this fire. And I encourage all the residents to um, to, uh, to listen to the guidance of the local authorities uh, to making sure that they are safe. And we will do everything to making sure that uh, the property is protected. And I also just want to mention, uh, even just before this, I was actually just in Kamloops and then in the Soyuz. And we had a similar situation there at that time. Uh, even before, as I was briefed uh, by the fire department uh, in a Soyuz, even before uh, they were, the fire department was notified, resources were pushed in. And, they, um, and the reason I want to emphasize this, this is that the system is almost extremely seamless, is um, uh, resources are pushed down before they're even asked. And because of this, they were able to uh, protect the neighborhood in one place, the neighborhood in one house, uh, the, uh, the fire was literally one meters away. And the fire department told me that if one house had gone up, they could have potentially lost the entire neighborhood there. And that it, so it just goes to show um, how well the system works, but at the same time, it's because of year after year we've had this uh, experience. It's sad that we have to do so. So it's one of the discussions that we need to have in the future and the work that Mr. Blair has started that uh, we need to work on prevention, we need to work on uh, adaptation, and we need to make sure that the right resources are even enhanced when it comes to response as well. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have... Um... Dan Spector, Global News. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Minister Rodriguez, you talked about it in um, in French, but I was wondering if you could just talk a bit more also about those uh, conversations that are going on with Meta because of uh, all the people who are affected by these wildfires who are not able to uh, to see news about how to get out or about how they're evolving because uh, because of what Meta is doing right now. Well, what I said is, is that what Meta is doing totally unacceptable. Um, and I warned them during the conversations in the past of the risk of blocking news. We've seen what happened in Australia. I told them this could happen here. They said that it would be different. It is not different. So I'm asking them uh, to go back on their decision and allow people to have access to news and information uh, in, in, in Canada. And uh, Minister Blair, are more military troops being prepped uh, to go and assist in these operations? Do a, what kind of expansion of military operation do you anticipate? How many troops could be troops could be uh, devoted to these fires? Yeah, thanks. We're, we're prepared to send whatever resources are required. There, there was reconnaissance that was done by our officials. We're, we're, as I said, we've worked very closely with the territory to determine what was needed and, and where they were needed and the certain skill sets that were required and equipment requirements. Um, that has been determined. And, and so far, we've, we've, as I've said, we've deployed about 150 members from, uh, from Belcartier. We've also sent in aviators. And of course, the Rangers are also very present. They're from that community. Um, I think the Rangers, I want to acknowledge, they do extraordinary work. 
network uh, for us in the north. Um, they're out there helping the, the people at, at evacuation centers, uh, registering at, at the airport. They're also helping along that highway to, to make sure that you know there are support services, tow trucks, fuel fuel depots. Um, it's a long drive south uh, from from Yellowknife to those communities, and the Canadian Armed Forces are there. We're prepared to scale up if required, uh, but right now we believe that there's adequate resources to do the tasks that have been assigned. Um, and you know some of those firefighters are level three trained firefighters. Uh, but they've also been doing important work and working with local officials to build a fire break to protect the western uh, regions of that city as the fire advances. And as, as Harge has said, there's some extraordinary work being done to protect that community. And although out of an abundance of caution and prudence, we're moving people to evacuation. We're also doing everything possible uh, to ensure that we protect the community, critical infrastructure, people's homes, livelihoods, um, the city of Yellowknife. Thank you. From what I've seen the list, uh, two last questioners. Uh, well, Stuart Benson from Hill Times and Richard Raycraft from CBC. Let's start with uh, Stuart Benson, Hill Times. Thank you. Hi there. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I think this is probably for Minister Sejan, but uh, anyone can jump in for this. But it, are there any sort of contingency plans that are in place now in, in the worst case scenario that this fire does reach Yellowknife and, and, and we the uh, evacuees may not be able to return uh, anytime soon. Is that has that been uh, planned out for? Is that something that uh, there are resources in place to to handle as of right now? And in fact, actually, contingency planning is something that we do quite regularly and work on the worst case uh, scenarios. And this is one of the reasons why um, Northwest Torrance made the decision to uh, uh, give the evacuation order. Um, but we are looking at uh, many different contingencies. But what I also will say is that when it comes to contingency planning, it, take, it does take a lot of effort. This is why the Canadian Armed Forces personnel has sent additional planners um, um, uh, to them to help plan out those uh, uh, contingencies, also work on logistics. And we've also even had Coast Guard personnel have also sent in uh, people to start looking at the various plannings. So this contingency planning happens on, on a regular basis on a worst case scenarios. And we have worked out many different scenarios. And also this takes into account a lot of the weather uh, patterns that take place. Daily, there's uh, briefings on the weather shift in wind. And uh, so it's based on um, some very good work that uh, provided from um, Enerican of, uh, of, and it takes into account how these contingency plans are put into place. Um, and just, oh, sorry. And just on the, uh, a follow-up uh, relating to the, the nas national force, would this be, because it does, we do rely uh, very heavily on our armed forces for these sort of coordination, as you said, is that, something that could be considered that it, even if it's not a national force, it could be something more integrated into the, the armed forces so that even if we are still relying on them, that it would be more a, a, of a dedicated uh, a, a force on that, that level. So this is something that we are looking at right now is what, what, what type of response is needed. And, and as we look at it, it's, rather than looking at what type of uh, force is needed to kind of work backwards, what we need to do is look at what type of emergency have we been dealing with. Um, it is sad to see that in Canada, because of climate change, we've been dealing with a lot of emergencies. If you look from 2015 on, the Canadian Armed Forces have been deployed uh, far more in the last number of years than they have in the last uh, 30 years. Um, and this is something we need to take into account. We also need to be mindful that uh, the Canadian Armed Forces also have other um, uh, very important duties that need to be done not in, all over the world. So as they are looked at as, as a force, when we we will look at what type of resources are going to be needed at the federal level. But more importantly, how do we also uh, 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 bolster support at the uh, provincial level? So nothing is off the table, but the analysis that we need to do and what type of structure is going to be needed is going to be based on the analysis on the different emergencies that we've been having to deal with in the last uh uh, 10 years um, and, and beyond. And then we'll also take a look at where things can actually go. Then we'll build out from that what will actually uh, be, ne be needed. And then we'll also look at what type of additional tools, uh, uh, whether it's Canadian Armed Forces or other agencies uh, will, be, will be needed, which will include more training, more equipment, and uh, even potential uh, other type of federal uh, forces. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Richard Raycraft, CBC. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Minister Sajjan, uh, you mentioned that you're contracting at the federal level uh, more aircraft to supplement uh, what the military has. Uh, what did you mean by that? Can you, uh, can you provide more details? 
Uh, what we try to do is, um, uh, as because in our own forces, we we have that ability for for transport air. But we also try to do is uh, contract uh, aircraft, pri private aircraft, uh, to be able to do this. Whether it's going to be helicopters or larger uh, transport uh, aircraft. So that's what our teams are working on now: is contracting civilian aircraft that can go in uh, and help with the evacuation, which will supplement what the Canadian Armed Forces have. And uh, Minister Blair, uh, both you and Minister Sajjan mentioned that the military has been called in many times to respond to natural disasters lately. Given that we're leaning on the military for disaster response to an unprecedented degree, uh, should the Canadian Armed Forces get more resources, including more funding from the government to be able to do this type of work? Well, a, thank you very much for the question, which is an important part of the Canadian government's commitment to to re regenerate our, our forces, to make sure that they, they are right-sized and, and that they are equipped and resourced to do the important jobs that we call upon them. And, and as Mr. Sajan uh, acknowledged, we, we've, been, we've had to call upon the Canadian Armed Forces, and they've been extraordinary. They've answered the call in every case, and, and they've, they've provided service. They've saved lives in this country. One of their responsibilities is, is, is to provide domestic response, but we know as the world becomes an increasingly dangerous place. We need to invest significantly in the Canadian Armed Forces to make sure that they have the people, the resources, and the capacity that they need to do all of the jobs that Canadians rely upon them to do. And so that's a commitment that our government has, has made. We're making significant new investments um, in, in the Canadian Armed Forces uh, to ensure that they are able to provide the supports and services and be there for Canadians when we need them. Uh, merci en terminant. Uh, je crois que nous avons un, uh, un autre là. Mali, Cheval Johnson, Radio Canada. Bonjour. Oui, désolé, il y a eu des problèmes avec euh, ma main. Um, J'ai posé la question en anglais, mais j'aimerais savoir une réponse en français. Um, uh, for Minister Sajjan, uh, I'll, I'll hope for an answer in French afterwards. We're just wondering, with the contingency plan in Alberta, um, if there's not enough space to receive evacuees in Alberta in the coming days, wh what is the plan and how is the government, federal government uh, helping in, in that one? Sorry, could you repeat the question? The, the question was cut off a little bit. Apologies. Um, what is the contingency plan if there's not enough space to host all evacuees from the Northwest Territories in Alberta, and how is the federal government helping in that? Well, Marie, per perhaps I could jump in and then we'll turn back to Minister Sajan. And then I believe um, Minister Rodriguez will be able to provide the, your, your answer in, in English. Um, we work very closely with all of our provincial partners to ensure that there are facilities. And, and we know a significant number of people are currently evacuating, obviously, up to 25,000 people from, from Yellowknife. But there are also huge evacuations taking place in Kelowna and West Kelowna right now. And, and so what we have seen in every case is that our provincial and our municipal partners step up and, and open their doors their hearts. The vast majority we know of people that will be evacuating will go to, to family and friends. Uh, but for those who do not have that uh, resource available to them, we'll make sure that, that they've got a, a, a safe place and that we move as quickly as possible to get them back to their homes. And so the, the, the firefighting efforts that are going on, um, the repatriation of these people will, will ensure that they have the supports that they need wherever they need them um, in, 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 in communities right across Canada. Um, and, and as well, we'll be working very hard with our provincial territory and, and local of, uh, officials to ensure that we get those people back to their homes as quickly and safely as possible. Alors, on travaille avec les, les différentes provinces euh, et territoires, évidemment. Euh, il, il, pour acheter des destinations, il y a beaucoup euh, de personnes qui vont aller vers leur famille, vers leurs amis, ce qui va être leur destination euh, naturelle. Dans le cas de l'aviation euh, civile, par exemple, il y a des vols, euh, on le sait, euh, vers Edmonton, Gagari, mais il y en a aussi euh, vers Vancouver. Alors, on doit s'assurer de pouvoir évacuer ces gens de façon la plus sécuritaire possible, la plus rapide possible, mais aussi, euh, dès que la situation va le permettre, on veut les retourner euh, dès, à la maison euh, dès que possible également, en toute sécurité.
Merci de faire la traduction, M. Rodriguez. Euh, J'ai une question pour vous <rire> directement. Euh, est-ce qu'on a des préoccupations? Euh, est-ce qu'il y a des avions qui sont encore cloués au sol, qui pourraient partir, mais qui ne le peuvent pas en raison de manque de personnel, par exemple la pénurie des pilotes? Non, on a pris des mesures de ce que, de ce que je comprends et on, et on est en contact permanent avec le sol, permanent, permanent. Euh, on a parmi des mesures qui nous permettent de s'assurer euh, qu'on a des pilotes en tout temps. Par exemple, on permet d'étendre de trois heures le nombre d'heures qu'un pilote peut voler, mais l'approbation doit être donnée vol par vol. C'est pas de façon générale. Il faut que y ait le, 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 y ait le territoire demande à Transport Canada une autorisation de trois heures supplémentaires pour un pilote dans un vol spécifique, ce qu'on autorise de façon générale, tant aussi longtemps que la sécurité le permet. Donc ça, ça nous permet d'ajouter des heures vol et de ce que je comprends, on a tout, tout le personnel nécessaire pour faire voler le nombre d'avions nécessaires. Merci, c'est toutes les questions pour aujourd'hui. Thank you, I believe that's all the questions we have today. Thank you, ministers, uh, journalists. Merci, miigwech, au revoir.